Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we are the Obsidian Brews crew, and uh, welcome to a black tabletop game RPG gaming experience. Um, and we'll hop right in. So, um, to meet the OB game masters, uh, we're a little bit out of order right here, but we can go, I guess, from here. Anita, if you want to do your intro. Hi, um, I'm Anita. Um, you, some of you might know me by my online moniker, Tranquil Ashes. Um, I've been playing D&D, ooh, like 15 years. Most of them has been home brews. I'm a homebrew baby, so I'm like, rules, what are those? Check them out of the window. Um, but uh, I do the head graphics here for the team and social media, and that's me. Nice. Oh, uh, hey, let's make sure. Can you hear me now? It's clearly cool. <laughs> uh, this is Matt. Um, <laughs> I help with the community and stuff and uh, let people know about stuff and going out there and getting stuff together. But I've been playing D&D for how long have we been playing, bro? Uh, 2016? Yeah, 2016. We've been playing since uh started with this guy and then uh, branched out and played. We started Pathfinder, then went to D&D and tried some other systems here and there, you know, a little bit there. Um, I started as a player, now I'm a DM, been DMing for a couple of years, roughly. Um, you can look me up uh, on ResMonk or uh, Samurai Walker X. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, hi, I'm Rob, uh, Rob Madison, Mad Dr. Rob on the Everywheres. Uh, I <laughs> am your director of gaming of Obsidian Brews and your humble map maker. Uh, I, generally speaking, if there's a game we want to play, I'll probably be the one to learn all the rules and be like, ah, yeah, this game is going to be great. Or, eh, you know, but most games are great, so I like playing games and it's fun. Um, I've been playing tabletop games uh, since 2016, where I made up my own wacky world that was super broken and probably should never see the light of day again, but it was fun. <laughs> um, and then uh, transitioned to Pathfinder and D&D and then got into a bunch of other systems because it's a blast. Uh, I DM a lot. Uh, I make lots of maps. If you want to just see my maps, you can follow me. Well, yet again, Mad Dr. Rob on the Everywheres. Or if you just want to see my maps, uh, MDR underscore Map Emporium. Uh, and that's, generally speaking, me and our <laughs> humble leader. Hello all, my name is Bendy Mitchell. I am the founder of Obsidian Brews. Um, I am a DM, a gamer, a m not a map maker, but a system maker. Um, I do one shots um, and try to creatively create one shots within different universes, uh, throughout different genres. Um, I recently, with the help of Rob, collaborated on making a uh, love letter to Norse mythology known as Monsters in Midgard. We're trying to get it online this year for play. Um, but essentially, uh, we came together to create Obsidian Brews to create a safe space for gamers of color, specifically black tabletop players, to network, uh, create community, and have fun. Um, so where I started as a, a wee wee babe throwing my father's math rocks across the room and not knowing anything about the systems as a child, um, but then growing to you know start world building and you know focused really into D and D and branched out from there. Um, and going off of that, we can go to our next slide. What are your favorite systems? Um, for me, outside of D&D, &D, I really like um, things that give you opportunity to really break the game. Um, paranoia is great for that. Um, it's a system that essentially you are living underground and you are one of six clones that you can play and you worship the computer. And the computer is God and everything is this kind of 80s dystopian nightmare that you can kind of uh, create decent homebrews out of. Um, I also really enjoy the Alien RPG system. That is a huge recommend if you're into horror. The fear system in that is nightmarishly good. Um, Let's run screaming down a hallway. Yes. It's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did it. It was great. You can play it. It's yeah. awesome. Run screaming. You roll. You freeze and just die or ruin it for everybody else. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, those are some of my favorite systems. Anita? <laughs> I don't have a favorite system. Um, 
like I said, I've been home brewing it for most of my life. So all of the systems really just came from my DM friends' heads. Um, we still played with um, character sheets and we still did the basic rules and stuff like that. But I guess outside of non home brews, I'm more of like a 5e. That's pretty much where I'm most comfortable um, at in terms of uh, games. And then honestly, whatever these folks throw me in, I'm really happy to do that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, played a few different uh, systems. Played uh, what Pathfinder and, and you know at different conventions they have like shows where they'll show you how how a game is played. I got to mess with the uh, Transformers one. It's pretty cool. Transformers. Uh, yeah, Transformers. That's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. L lately in the past, I think a year, I've been like looking into other ones. Like uh, we, you guys played the Aliens one, which was really dope. Um, yeah, the what was the one for kids? The kids, bike, on bikes? kids on bikes. Yeah, I'm I'm very you much want, looking into. I'm gonna cool. run. I'm trying to run some kids on bike stuff. Uh, A system by Hunters Entertainment. Yeah. They, um, who we've worked well worked with, but collabed with kind of in the past, so they're fun. Yeah, yeah that one's that was gonna be fun. I'm also gonna be learning uh, kids on brooms. Very similar, just instead of being a kid in a town in the middle of nowhere. You're a wizard, Ari, and mm -hmm. you get to be in your own little wizarding world, which I'm like, that sounds really fun, and we can make it non-problematic, so let's do that. <laughs> There's a couple uh, D6 systems I was looking into. Uh, there was a uh, cyberpunk one and the, um, what was it? Witcher. Witcher. Witcher one. Yes. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so outside of our favorite systems, we all uh, really like homebrewing, which is why we came up with Obsidian Brews. Um, what is homebrewing, for those who don't know, it is fan terminology for a game material made by players of a game rather than the official or third party publishers. In a D&D context, this often includes new spells, character classes, uh, campaign settings, or, various vari or variants to the rules. Um, why do we love homebrewing? Um, for me personally, it, it allows you to explore so many different themes and ideas and s things within yourself that are outside of the conf confines of the main systems, especially as a player of color. Um, there isn't a whole lot of opportunity for us to explore certain cr cultural things without it being kind of cringy. Um, so being able to create our own space for that is really important to me. Um, it's my life. Homebrews are my life, honestly. Um, I, I've i always been a person that's had a hard time with restrictions. So with homebrews, I get to kind of just do whatever, whatever I want. I can kind of get to be whoever I want. Um, so as a creative person, that really does fuel my enjoyment of the game. So that's, that's why I particularly care for homebrews. Um, I've been playing and running more games uh, over the past year or two, but I haven't been streaming as much. And uh, some of the, many of the games I've been running were like uh, higher level games. So for homebrew, sometimes you have to kind of make something that'll work based on a higher level, because the system in general, they don't have like too many like high level monsters for a variety if you're running more than one game for groups. So you kind of have to make something that's like easily survival being against a team of people that can just kind of wipe a whole bunch of stuff on D and already. <laughs> I like homebrews because you get to make whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. It sounds very simple, but for me, it's literally you can make anything you want. If you want to see something, put it in. If you want to see a dynamic, put it in. If you want to see a place you've never been before, put it in. If you want to make a place that's never been made or very similar but slightly off kilter or you want to fight a monster that's not been, you saw in your favorite video game but they don't have it right here, put it in. I make maps for fun because I want to make places people have never been before. Places I haven't seen before until I went, that's a cool idea, sketch, sketch, sketch. I'm gonna make this thing that I haven't seen before. I wanna be in the tavern I haven't been in before. I wanna throw my players in a random casino in a town I've made up that they've never been before. And then you make it happen. 
And so as a DM running homebrew stuff, it's so much fun to be like, hey, this is cool, this world exists. As a person of color running this, I get to be like, hey, not only do you get to go meet the mayor or the emperor of this place, but that person is a brown-skinned uh, female presenting person. Uh, the, the grand vizier of this place that is the right hand to the king is a uh, honey-skinned uh, dragonborn who uses the wheelchair. And that's just how they are. The, the two people that have helped you have been a uh, interspecies couple uh, of same sex or asexual people. Great, put it in. These people exist in the world, so let's put it in their game and let's have it. There. Let's run it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to look up custom rules on yeah, how to right. have people. <laughs> put it in and you let it rot. Right. Welcome. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's what, ma that's what makes homebrewing stuff fun. Let's go, this is, this is not something I get to see anywhere else or it's only in my head or it's only in my circle. Cool. Then my circle is mm -hmm. going to see this when we play in the game. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. Yeah, and even just embracing homebrewing, even through regular systems. Um, we, for instance, played Curse of Strahd, and Curse of Strahd is a little clunky when it comes to like specific cultural things. Um, they tried to kind of mask the fact that they just stereotyped Romani people, um, things like that, or really left a lot of holes as far as certain characters that you could really develop, especially with um, Esmeralda, um, who has a disability and you don't, they don't really give anything to that in the rule book, so you can expand upon that, and especially if you have a group of players that either they want to role play or let's say that they want to um, experience something in the game. Instead of being pigeonholed to the rules, if you just kind of homebrew some things in there, you get to flow the role playing the way that you and your party want to play, not the way that the rules say you should. And that is infinitely more fun <laughs> for everybody yeah. involved. Um, and the reason we're so stuck on homebrewing, um, this is something that we found on the D&D lore wiki, the problem with homebrews. homebrews. Uh, Fan-made Dungeons & Dragons material is often criticized for low quality and poor balance. This phenomenon is particularly well observed in D&D 3rd Edition, an edition which strongly rewards character optimization. Players who create their own game content may be biased towards creating towards creating content which makes their characters more powerful. This is the standard for their level. Again, having a problem with your characters being more powerful during gameplay kind of yeah. <laughs> says something about you as a DM. If you're so stuck on your own personal journey and you're not stuck on the journeys of your players, it's kind of unfair for them to be able to really experience this world you want to express to them. Yeah. So. I've, I, as someone who just ran a game for some folks and they definitely did some shit that I wasn't ready for. <laughs> um, really, this is one of those bigger things where it's like, oh yeah, if you get, especially if you have a module and you give in like a module or a story and you're like, I'm gonna run this and the second your players go, I wanna do something different. A lot of people or definitely a lot of newer DMs will go, I don't know what to do with mm -hmm. something different. We're gonna steer you right back yeah. to what's on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and that, I've, I've had that happen to me when I was first learning to play, like way back in the day when I wanted to play with the other kid and they were like, no, we're gonna hurt you and force you to go, like, why? We could have had a way interesting story yeah. over here where you could have weaved the story this way. Nobody knows, but make it up. This is, we're make, this is a tabletop role playing game where we collectively tell a story. Make it up. Nobody's gonna know. No one's gonna know. Let's have, let's have <laughs> They're some not gonna fun. know. Have the group have fun. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so, did you want to say anything on that, Matt? On um, homebrews and yeah. being, well, you kind of evolve with players and with your, your group. So sometimes you'll have a story that you want to tell, but remember, it's, it's a group story. So everyone has to have some type of input or some type of way of changing the story. Mm -hmm. And even in the modules, there's uh, always some space for uh, growth. And it's really, many times it's one line of, oh, we're here. <laughs> you could, as a DM, take it where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. So there's always some room for a flex. And you could even make one whole session entirely different from the rest of the campaign. Mm -hmm. It's your little uh, 
non canon for sure. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think I mean I'm like a broken record. <laughs> Home brews are my thing, um, but that's kind of why I didn't do traditional. Um, uh, modules and things like that because the DMs that I had, your, your DM is so important to your story um, that it didn't like the way that they presented the story to me. I didn't want to play. It um, restricted me from from just basically doing anything, any type of creativity mm -hmm. or anything that I can infuse in the story was stopped. And so now that you know I'm with this crew and we're doing homebrews and also being able to take modules or other um, stories and adding our own twist in it, I mean, it can't get any better to right. be honest. Mm -hmm. From like a personal note, I, I will never forget, I had to sit out a campaign that was run by Matt and he brought me in to do a single like you know one-on-one -on -one, you know to catch me up and halfway through i realized that the entire plot was that of picking the poisoned cup in princess and the bride <laughs> princess bride and it just it blew me away i was like this is amazing i get to be a part of this story that i love that i grew up with and he made it tailored to me and that's something as a player that's like wow that means something and that like stuck with me so it's like being able to have those moments for your players outside of like that one paragraph that's in the module it's like it, that's way more important and special to gameplay especially since some players are trying to like work things out through their characters i play a lot of tieflings that have devil daddy issues so that's something that gets worked out <laughs> through my character um so it's you know it's helpful to the players but you developing as a dm to branch out from that um, and because they focus so much on like, oh, you have to play the rules, we don't real a lot of people don't realize the real problem with tabletop, and it's a severe lack of equality and inclusivity and diversity. This is an issue that's been coming up a lot lately, that there have been racist stereotypes and things that need to be revised. The fact that they created an archetype for elves and dwarves in like the 1920s and just stuck with that, and then when D&D &D came around, it's like, okay, I think, I think Lord of the Rings came out in the 20s or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, roll with it. Charisma check. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> you know, and they just stick with that. Dwarves always have Scottish accents in everyone's campaigns. Elves <laughs> are, you know, these like alabaster skinned, tall, you know, ethereal people that live in trees. It's like you can, you can get away from that so that everyone can enjoy the game and enjoy those characters because not just people who look like those characters like them. Um, anything you guys want to say on that? Um, no? The changes, yeah. well, they've, they've made upgrades and changes along the way to try and help against that. Like, I remember, because we've been playing for a while now, that some characters used to have, uh, well, all of them had, had, used to have negatives to their skills, to their abilities and stuff. And it was like, that's very pigeonholing in the viewpoint of, uh, I mean, different ancestries, so to speak, of characters. And it's great that they took that out and that they uh, made it more inclusive and made characters be able to just grow based on how you build them rather than having anything against them. Mm. Also, Gabe Hicks, if you don't know, that individual, like the godfather <laughs> of uh, black D&D, basically. Um, he's done, oh God, so much. He's done so much. Um, so that's someone you could definitely look out. They have a TikTok channel, things like that, um, to kind of like baby step you into it and, and like they also bring cosplay which is something that I'm super passionate about into the D&D &D space so it's like not only do I get to tell my own story but I get to look like my character as well. And the reason we want to focus on this so much is, you know, this is an actual Quora post I came across. You know, is Dungeons and Dragons geared more towards Caucasian audiences? Can people of color play D&D &D as well? I'm not trolling. I just want to know if I, as a black person, would be welcomed into a D&D &D group. And this is something a lot of people of color have to ask themselves because every time we see fantasy characters in media, it's almost always Caucasian characters, Caucasian fantasy characters, or white passing characters. Even with you know Stranger Things, we got Erica and Lucas and their background characters that have zero development. Yeah. So no one wants to you know focus on them as the the heroes of the story. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a fantasy lover, so um, the fact that the you know even till today, 2023 now, um, that there's so few like not not even just black people of color um, in fantasy. Um, 
we're definitely looking to try to change that because um, outside of just D&D, we're definitely trying to push projects that have people with faces like us in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting that at this time, like there's a new movie coming out, Dungeons and Dragons with Chris Pine, I'm sure. Many of you, like I haven't seen any of us in that oh, movie. Oh, there's a side oh. character that's mildly ethnic. Yeah. That's mildly ethnic. There are, yeah. Now I love me some Chris Pine. There are a people. I don't. There, 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 there's a couple people in that but, one. But, sorry? Yes, new Dungeons there are new Dungeons movie. and Dragons. There are a couple people in that one. Yeah. There's a yeah. couple, but when were you they see in the two? <laughs> two? We yeah. got two. We got two. Yeah, yeah, but that's not enough. <laughs> and what's his name from uh, Bridgertons is in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh the Bridgertons. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, is that what you really see the big, the big names and the big faces that you get to see is the Chris Pine and mm -hmm. you know the, yeah. I forget her name, the girl from It who's playing one of the. Yeah, athletes, I, I think, think the main trilogy is definitely yeah. all. Well, that's the thing too. It's like people get excited, like, oh, we got representation, like in Rings of Power, but they use the brown skinned elf just to introduce racism towards elves like when he walked into the bar the first thing that happened was they hassled him for his race yeah. so it's like I understand that there's there's trying but there's still the lack you know and these characters these tried and true characters that we see over and over always end up being white passing or whitewashed characters yeah uh, house of the dragon another great example of uh introducing an entire <laughs> black family um that's important especially if you're a book reader to like integral to the story and um ripping I mean, them away they've kind of regulated them to the background and whenever you did see them in a in like the screen they were only on the screen for like two or three minutes said a couple of words or and that's it and then or like spoiler alert they killed all of us off <laughs> so mm -hmm. and didn't even give like more meaning towards the deaths no, you just know there was off. more development for um the viper you yes. know who fought the mountain like more people felt emotion towards his passing than you know very badass black characters that were put into the valerian family yeah valerian Valerian? Valerian. Valerian. <laughs> Valerian. Um, but yeah, so like those are all those, like we keep seeing these examples and like even though they say we're getting, they're getting like better. Almost there. They're, we're <laughs> almost there, but it's like, it's it's even worse if you put us in there if you're not going to use us or if you do use us you use us in a way that is negative and basically backtracking the whole point of us being in there in the first place and having that being the main you know view of media since everything is focused within you know film and tv and such it trickles down into our games you know like people want to you know focus on the main character of that story and then developing that character into their campaigns it's like making sure that you know we don't just stick with one race um, so on that note, <laughs> because we have the extreme lack, these are some of the folks making moves right now in the tabletop community. Um, Rivals of Waterdeep into the Motherlands RPGs done by Cypher. Critical B uh, Bard has been doing multiple cruises and events, um, really pushing for um, representation by us. We have Abria who's been do doing Critical Role, Dimension 20. B. Dave Walters recently did a campaign with the kids of Stranger Things. Um, Latia has been working hard with Rivals of Waterdeep, Critical Latia. Role works for Wizards of the Coast now. Wizards of the Coast, yes. Yeah, she's now officially part of WotC, which is awesome. By That's the way, amazing. all of these people, take a picture of this screen, please, and probably the next ones where we have folks up here. These are faces that you should be following, and they help cultivate a very welcoming space in the tabletop community. Uh, there are plus many others but then pretty much you follow them, they'll point you in the right direction to other folks, uh, black folks, other folks uh, uh, of color, and other allies that we should be looking forward to and looking to and people that were definitely on our mm -hmm. side. Because um, all these people have been doing huge stuff. I, you know, yeah, we're here and we DM. I watch a lot of D&D content when I'm not here. It's like, oh, what do you watch on TV? I don't know. I watch D and D shit. <laughs> um, so the amount of like watching Rivals of Waterdeep is incredible. Mm -hmm. They have it's literally an all uh, all PLC cast with every season's ten uh, ten episodes, and they rotate DMs each season. So you can always see a different story being told. Same group of people, different story each season, mm -hmm. and they get wild, and it's 
awesome. Like watching like Critical Bard do his thing on any one shot or even any uh, campaign he's in is incredible. Like Abria, godlike. I'm gonna say that. I'm on camera. It's camera right there. Godlike. <laughs> B Dave, godlike. <laughs> And also just super amazingly sweet people because, yeah. you know, being in tabletop, whether you're, you know, you hear it's your first introduction to tabletop or not, um, we notice that the more we interact with people of color within the community, the more welcoming they are. Um, there's this family-like atmosphere. Um, we did the BIPOC mixer at Gen Con um, when we had a panel out there, and it was just, it didn't matter what level they were on. B. Dave, you know, Cypher, you know, all of them were just like, hi, hello, what do you do? You make maps? That's amazing. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about um, what creature would you want to eat first if you were starving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like. Yes, that was a real conversation topic Cobalt. we had. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> you know, so it's just. Unicorns. Is that, it, I think we definitively said it must unicorns. be unicorns. Unicorns. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It has to be unicorns. If we're not, all, if they're like, oh, everybody wants a unicorn, but nobody allows you to take the unicorn, it must be, it must be, <laughs> it must be delicious. delicious. They have to. It has to be. <laughs> but that's the thing that we want to continue to foster, you know, because it's difficult for us to find, you know, spaces for us out there in the, you know, tabletop community at large. So it's like continuing to maintain this, you know, open community atmosphere. No, you know, we're not trying to compete with each other. We're just trying to tell stories and play games. Um, so these are a lot of the folks that are doing that as well. Um, and then here are some more folks that are working in the community. Um, we mentioned Gabe, three back, sorry, sorry, my mm -hmm. words get tangled. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> three Black Halflings has a really dope podcast to check out. Uh, Brianna DeCoster, um, Brie Utahime, she's wonderful. She she's does um, the Initiative Order. Um, they are always welcoming new players that want to play in games. Some of them are live streamed. Um, definitely check them all out. Uh, Christine has been making waves, huge waves in Star Wars and Marvel mm -hmm. and all kinds of things outside of tabletop. So she's really just kind of pushing the envelope for us all. And Sweet Lou. Mm -hmm. The wonderful yeah. Sweet Lou. Um, definitely check him out. He's on uh, Dimension 20 as well. Um, Do not sleep on that man. Mm -hmm, mm -mm. He is a beast in the tabletop space. Whenever he, whatever he's on, he's going to give a thousand percent. And oh, it's yeah. such, he's such a great storyteller in his own right. Mm -hmm. Honestly, all the people on there are amazing. Everyone, yeah, they are. <laughs> and you can be too if you want to be part of the D and D, you know, tabletop community too. If you, mm -hmm. if that's something you've been interested in or something you've been kind of doing on the side, like we want to welcome a space where we can like push you to, you know, if you want to reach higher, you know, echelons, goals, things, things yeah. like that. Um, also, like you can use D and D for. To, to boister other skills yes. that you are wishing to improve. Your writing skills, your your ability to act if you want to be an actor. Um, d d is a lot of acting, actually, especially in front of other people. A lot. Um, you know, public speaking. There are a lot of, like, things that you can end up learning, like, mm -hmm. vicariously through doing tabletop. Right. Yeah. And whether you're a DM or a player, if mm -hmm. you um, work with a really good DM that, you know, if you are just learning how to role play, they can work with you and work through scenes with you and help you along. And that's, you know, that's the beauty of homebrewing. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, okay, your character wants to eat this mushroom off a turtle's back. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's figure let's out what do that this. does to you. Wait, has your character had a lot of mushrooms before? What's your constitution? Oh, a zero. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, this literally just, just happened. happened. <laughs> It did um, just they, they say they, they you think this is a joke. This just happened. Yeah. I had to deal with this. It was great. <laughs> this just happened. It didn't go well for them. It's not my fault, it's theirs. <laughs> but the beauty of a good DM is like, okay, cool. Whatever's written on my paper. So what do you want to do next? Yeah. Great, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, with that, we talk about you know the future of tabletop. Um, some great systems to look at into the motherlands, the Wagadoo Chronicles. I do believe that's becoming an online MMO. I, th I think so. Yes. I think yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, pushing for more characters like Erica. Uh, we were at Dragon Con and the actor who played her mother came running up to us cosplaying the group and she's like they did us dirty this season and I'm like I know they did <laughs> yeah. so it's like really getting more on fire for characters like that in media and showing our love and support for them and how much we need them and just being vocal about it is important mm -hmm. and uh, I will say uh, Watsi you know they're they're working on it you know they're getting there or hopefully they hopefully they will get there soon sooner rather than later uh, but I 
do have to give it up for uh, the mod- the module book, Journey Through the Radiant Citadel. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a chance, you know, if you haven't picked it up, or if you had a chance to pick it up, or at least look through it, uh, all I think there are 14 adventures in there. All of them, the whole book was done by people of color. Like the whole book, the from the uh, director running the book to all of the artists, all of the mo- people who made all the modules. Everyone there was a person of color. And what was the name of it again? Uh, Journey Through the Radiant Citadel. Okay. Uh, it's official Wizard of the Coast uh, D&D bo- uh, book. I know I have my copy at home. <laughs> I had to be like, no, we got all, we, we all, uh, we all got our, mm-hmm. we got our name on some. Let's put it out there. Let's, mm-hmm. let's support. Um, and I've gone through it. I've taken a couple monsters from them. They don't know that yet, but that's that problem. Mm-hmm. Not yes. mine is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's a. It's definitely something you want to see more of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have more people make more people of color out there in the D and D space, regardless of where you are. But playing the game, and especially when we get a chance to be out there in front of people, writing the games, writing the stories, u- utilizing the authenticity of being a person of color and what it's like in your wherever you're from. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. How how were you raised? And people have brought like their grandma was part. Were they NPC within the story? Mm-hmm. The way you know they celebrate this particular holiday was a part of their story, and it's mm-hmm. just a beautiful uh, culmination of a lot of those aspects that we like to see when we homebrew mm-hmm. put into a book, which is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, going on that, like there are strides that are being made, like you said, um, you know changing things about that a new generation of gamers is really pushing for inclusivity we we are also pushing for it as kind of like the elder generation um not that old you know know, and you know they're actually uh dungeons and dragons is looking at recent article um in december of last year that they're changing race and wanting to use species instead and experimenting with you know like hey this is the way we've been doing things since the 70s maybe it should be different now Mm -hmm. you know so it's like our voices are being heard you know, because we're all nerds at the end of the day, and even you know the people who run wizards, they're still kind of nerds. So, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Most of them are. Most I don't, of I don't them. know if the CEO is. You know, yeah, but yeah, so. emotionally they are. Fiscally, I don't. No. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, the you know strides are being made, and we want to just continue to push for that in our community and at large. Um, so yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Any money? Yeah. Back, back in the tie dye. Hi, Tommy. I got my introduction to the tabletop setting for video games. I started playing the Divinity Original Sin 2. I got to do that in all those games. Nice. And uh, I did like that. Almost the main cast, like the three-game characters, that you made first of color for a change. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering if you, if any of you, were pushing more of that, or if you kind of getting closer to the tabletop scene. Kingmaker is that. Kingmaker is that actually used to be a really well-known franchise. For Pathfinder, that is uh, very much fraying off Pathfinder Kingmaker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can get that on on Steam. Steam, yeah. That's yeah. Pathfinder Kingmaker, definitely on Steam and Epic. Yeah. Um, get like if that utilizes people of color as main characters, that's the that's, hard part. Yeah. That is yeah. the hard part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, then that's. I think that's the issue, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say one that is weird, but sort of works. Uh, Tiny, Teen, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Because you can make your own character and you can make them look however you want. Mm-hmm. My character's black. The mm-hmm. black dude. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, my character's going to be black. Why not? Um, honestly, for me, one of the reasons why I started playing D and D was because uh, the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep came out, and we played through it, and we're like, "That was fun. We should play D and D. Let's give it a shot. Mm-hmm. What is it? How do we do it?" And then I looked at all my friends and went, "Yeah, that'll be uh, okay. I'll run it." Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how we started. Yep. You know, so get that. Luckily, you know, you can make your own character. So. 
make them black. Mm -hmm. Who cares? It doesn't affect the, you know, not going to change the story because it does, shouldn't change anyone's story. What you look like, who yeah. you like, right? What your how you how you function in normal life. That shouldn't change the story. Yeah. So that that one may help. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, like that plays D and D specifically within the game, not so much, but. This is a mixed bag game. Horizon um, is a mixed bag game, but there's a lot of um, black and um, people of color in terms of the characters that the main character interacts with, and none of them are cliche or fall into some ter uh, stereotype or like ashy <laughs> for some reason because you know um, brown is ashy for some reason in video games I don't know um, but it's a very good game in and it's a fantasy game so you, you're able to see how they interact within like tavern speak you know selling things things you would be um, saying via your NPCs mm -hmm. in the game so if you want to look at like just character models and how they interact in a game horizon is a good one um, away from the, you know, the care, I guess, character games that like we can make your own character, but also double as to, uh, RPGs, um, things like Fallout and Cyberpunk, Fallout, yeah. um, they can play the game if they really like the game. And then if you want to DM a session of Fallout or Cyberpunk where they can continue on with that character and have them like save the Commonwealth in, in the Fallout game, like do things like that. Um, especially if they already love those kind of games. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, there are RPG systems that like work within that where you can just continue it and show them the love of D and D or tabletop or you know whatever system you utilize. Awesome. Any other questions? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm. Um, I think both would be fine, um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think both will be fine. I do still see how it could potentially cause we some division nice somewhere, so, nice yeah. things, yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, well, we're going to play these species, but still not make any of them black, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, or especially if the race is still present yeah. yeah or add certain stereotypes to it so i think allowing the opportunity to move through both race and species for certain games and such that giving people the options you know and allowing people to continue to homebrew and change things on their own that should help but i think i don't know i i I like having certain races within D&D, &D, but I don't like the things tied to the races. So if we are able to separate those things and then you know create certain sex within the species versus within the race, I think that would be better. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, personally, uh, I am happy that they are removing race from it and just going with species. Mm -hmm. Mainly because, and I think Jeremy Crawford said it uh, when they were talking about it during one of the things, the reason why they're changing it from race to species is because we as a society have a connotation with the word race. Yes, you do. So keeping the word race in there somehow people will just start ju like jumping to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus you go, okay, everything's a different species of humanoid. Mm -hmm. Humanoid is what we all are. Mm -hmm. Same like, you know, we're all humans. Yeah, you know, and I also think colors. race yeah. like automatically makes you think of everyone but um, Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. Like it uh, like pigeonholes you to think, mm -hmm. oh, you're saying race, you have to be talking about BIPOC people, right? Like you couldn't possibly be talking about anyone else. So I feel very much so that it's is a connotation mm -hmm. that's really stuck around, especially in the last ten years with the progression of everything that's going on society-wise. That it's super hot topic to say the word race. So I I do can I do I think they can do it? Yes. Do I prefer that they change it to species? Yes. Also, like a lot of things that are built deeper into D and D are like the different like wars and things within the races, or like different races that end up enslaved and such. And that's so D 
deep into yeah. the lifeblood of tabletop that it's like, you're right, we need to Keep just yeah. get away from it, you know? Yeah. But it's gonna be difficult because of so much material and because it's been around for so long, it's gonna be a really hard battle. But I, I agree that it should be more of the species and like certain things with race, you leave up to the DM and the party, you know, to consensually come together on what that means. Mm-hmm. And there's another aspect to that. So, like, um, with character building for a game like this for D and D, each character, like each ancestry or species, has different abilities and tributes and backgrounds to them. If you have a separation, another designation for a specific race. Then there's other things that can be attached to that with abilities. It's like, oh, this character probably is going to have a different ability or something different from their background because it's a different race now, right? Because that's the only designation. If there's no designation, then they're effectively starting effectively the same, right? Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any effective viewpoint differently because they're effectively just a different color, the character. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, But even taking that out, there still is the aspect of that built into D&D with... uh, the different exotic um, ancestries or species. Mm -hmm. For instance, currently, in the current game right now, there's like, what, 12 different types of elf? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's just elf. They're all just from different parts of the plains or the multiverse, but they all have very distinct differences for different reasons. Um, And then there's also a bunch of different types of dwarf. Mm-hmm. Variety of tieflings, but that comes with <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. gets murky. That's very specific. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are other issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, those are very specific issues. Um, but that's what I'm saying. There's still very changes, various changes within a certain species or ancestry that already exists. And if you introduce something else where effectively they should be the same, that opens many potential doors. Mm-hmm. For badness. <laughs> How are you going to play your game? Healthy or unhealthy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically. Exactly. Any more questions? Um, in the blue? Yes, okay. we saw your hand up earlier. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's the what's the uh, ignorance is not the right word I want to say, but the 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 saying is ignorance is bliss, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't know it's happening, you know you can enjoy properties and and games and things way easier if there isn't some background thing in your mind being like, oh, mm-hmm. they made all these dwarves black so they can enslave them, you know, things like that. Yeah. So. Um, it, it, it especially when <laughs> in D and D when it's such a um, non-friendly right. um, BIPOC place that gets pushed in all way the all the more all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah the entirety of Cholt is just yeah. all people of color, and it's all just horrendous, <laughs> horrendous like yeah. uh, stereotypes and things like that. Yeah. It, a lot of this, and if you aren't, I guess I'll try, I'll make it a little bit clear. If we aren't familiar with D and D as uh, as much as we are, because we play it all the time. Um, orcs, in most uh, most fiction, the dumb, lim- lumbering, brutish th- creature that's real big and just hits things. And sometimes uh, they t- give them dreadlocks. Yeah, are typically dark skinned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty much black analogs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the creatures, if you know, if you play them, a lot of D and D, a lot of the creature, like. All of the uh, the dark elves yeah. uh, oh are who live <laughs> underground are evil. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's just what they are. They, if you look at them, they oh, and they have uh, slavery. Yeah, they, and they have they, slavery. They, they have yep. slavery. They are evil. The All the dark skinned dwarves, the dwargar, uh, they are slaves. They are enslaved for a long period of time, and they're evil. And they are evil. Yeah. In, 
it. So it's one of those things where you mm. you look at it all the time and you go, but they can't all be like they that. They can't all be evil. They can't all. They can't be this mm. all the time. And what makes it difficult? Luckily, you're currently in a space where we all go. No, it's not all like that. But there are some tables out there, and hopefully you don't ever some run into people. them. There are some people that will go, well, it was there in the lore, so it has to be right. this way. Mm -hmm. That's the way and it's it always been. It doesn't have to be this way. No. You can have, you know, you can have dark elves just running around on the surface. They may have some mm -hmm. sunlight sensitivity, but eh, that's a, not in the little sunglasses wouldn't help. <laughs> you know, you can have, uh, you know, orcs that are just cool. They're just here. They're just working, doing their, doing their job. They don't have to be yeah. evil. Your monstrous races, oh, they have goblins and kobolds running around. I know one of the dopest kobolds ever uh, who unintentionally started a cult. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he's, he's awesome, you know, like have goblins that are just working. So it's like those are things where we're trying to change, trying to yeah. change, hope yeah. to see change. But I want to give you a little more background mm -hmm. behind that. Go ahead. Stereotype. Very much so. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's difficulty if you find yourself being the only person of color at your table. Um, there are certain things that don't feel safe to speak out against. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For instance, I had a game where one of the other players was basically a cop um, and played as a cop, a paladin cop, um, and was very aggressive towards my character, who is the tiefling, who is already not, you know, is already not viewed well in society because of who they are and what they look like. And there was a scene where they were very adamant about putting, and they used the word shackles on me. And I didn't feel like I had a voice to speak up. And when I did, they acted like I was overreacting. And it's like, they don't understand certain things in gameplay and making sure like, hey, this is what's really like going on when you use these type of narratives and these scenarios and how not everybody at your table is comfortable. Yeah. So it's like pushing to speak out against these things, you know, even if it's just like char pre-made characters or how characters are made in the game, it's really important just to be very vocal about it from top to bottom because then you get moments like that. And then, yeah. you know, we, we have another friend who plays with us, Laura Tutu, who was just ecstatic just to be able to play with all people of color. She's like, this is the first time I've been at a Never table do it. Yeah. that wasn't all white people. And it's like the safety that comes with that because we are all aware of those things. Yeah. Um, I saw another hand over, yes. go ahead, purple. Yeah. That's what I was wondering is when you are playing in a game with people who have been playing for years mm -hmm. and have been familiar with the system that you are in, mm -hmm. how do you handle that? Yeah, the, the Gygax fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> importance of having yeah They tried to approach that situation respectfully. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, just so everyone, do not stay, even if you want to play, don't stay in a tabletop group that makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm, hell no. Please leave. Please get out. Goodbye. Don't don't tokenize yourself <laughs> in that at all. Because huh? I've, yep. I've had friends who have done that and, you know, and they leave never wanting to play mm-hmm. D&D yeah. again. So, you know, um, that's why we're here. Come to the OB Discord. Come to the OB Discord. Um, yes. 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 Uh, into the motherland. Into the motherland. Uh, you can catch that on Cipher Tears uh, YouTube channel or Twitch. Uh, it's fantastic. It's based on the fact that um, Mansa Musa sent a group of folks out into the universe. And they never came back to Earth, but they wound up in a new place and are making or doing some cool shit out there. And so it's a system without uh, the colonial effects of this current world. Uh, the definitely you can try like Wagadu Chronicles, hundred mm-hmm. percent, fantastic. And they have a great Discord that you can go speak with people who created the game, other people who are playing. It's a very welcoming environment, you know. So and they'll give you space to learn, you know, the system and with like-minded folks. Yeah, and I'll. And this is one of the things. I also goes back to uh, the previous question, mm-hmm. um, because with. And us, the fact that we do homebrew a lot of things. Because you can take, you can utilize, you know, a lot of stuff that in our lives are Eurocentric just because of how life went. Um, But you can take the experiences that we've had and write the different, write a different narrative. So, to your point, if you're ever you like, oh, how do I? What do I do to get people who are entrenched in old lore D and D? How do I go forward? You go, okay, I'm going to put you not in the Forgotten Realms, not in this place that you know all the rules of. I'm going to put you on a new continent, so it uses the same basic structure of D and D, right? It uses the same basic structure of whatever game system you're playing, but all of the connotations you had from before, those are gone. And you can just, especially as a DM, you can dictate, hey, all the, yeah, this place is full of drow, it's full of dwargar, like pretty much if you're gonna play, if you wind up playing a, you know, one of these creatures, you will not be looked at, uh, un- you know, with disgust. You know, oh, if you play a tiefling, you're a tiefling. People go, there's a tiefling. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's not. There's nothing else, and you can take that and go, boom. Here you go, um, which is what makes for us home brewing so much fun. You can go, hey, this is a problem with these books. Mm. I'm gonna take the rule from here, a uh, couple monsters from here, throw the rest of the book away. Brandy oh, Cinderella yeah. is a great home brew. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. That's a great home. It really is, though. <laughs> Literally, every everybody in there is mixed up, and no one cares. Nobody. It's like, how did that? Whoopi Goldberg and the guy from the Titanic? How'd that happen? How'd that happen? Hey. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. He's a hot. win is a win. A win is a win. <laughs> but yeah, so that, those are the the thing I would like to stress, especially because we are Obsidian Brews and because we homebrew. Every system has a bunch of rules and a bunch of old school lore and a bunch of blah 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 if I'm not mistaken in the D&D manual on one of the first pages it says that these rules are a guide, a guide. suggestions you do more like not have guidelines to take than actual rules yeah <laughs> so you can take the bits and pieces that you like the structure of the game how the game mechanics work and throw all the rest of it out the window and make your own thing. Yep. You can mm-hmm. make your own characters. You can make your own worlds. Mm-hmm. And however you want to do it, find the right table, find the right group of people, and then have fun with it. 
mm-hmm. and then respect it. Yes. Because, you know, you're sitting with a bunch of people that are probably crazy. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're a DM, your players you're crazy. are crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Up and all night just res- respect the <laughs> respect it. If you have something that's touchy, or you're like, oh, there is slavery in this world, but you guys are going to be the force to abolish it. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you have something that is a touchy subject, make sure that you are working to one show that that touchy subject is bad, and that hopefully the player characters know that is bad. We are going to stop that right. from happening. Yeah. Well, that's the importance of talking with your. Pa- talking with your players before and after play. Um, you got to have check-ins with them. Even before, like, a session zero is so important because then you can lay out the themes that are going to be in your story and if they're comfortable with that. You can ask them what is their their yeses, their nos, and their maybes. Um, a lot of uh, DMs do, like, you know, their own version of a red light, green light system. Mm-hmm. You know, where it's like, do I have the green light to go on with this? Someone just gave me a red light, hard stop, we move on and do something Some else. Mm-hmm. You know, or if you're playing online, you know, having a private chat between your players where someone can just message you be like hey I'm really uncomfortable with this and you don't have to you know put them on the spot during the campaign right in that moment you just switch say all of a sudden a, a little boy running with a chalice full of milk just takes off through the courtyard what do you do and it's like oh okay that's a complete switch you know mm-hmm. that, I think that happened in one of ours at one point yeah, probably yeah, yeah, it happens sometimes. there's another question right <laughs> uh, It's not for us. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Cherry picking. Yeah, cherry picking. So um sometimes you'll have like uh, so I'll set the setting here. So um I DM with them, and then I DM with other groups, and I also DM in a group that ha- that has like regular games of different groups, and they come from their characters will come from different uh, quote unquote worlds, and one of the players I DM'd for, their world was from Faerun, so it was like, and we had to go for a, a weapon, which happened to bring us to a problematic area, if we're going off the basic rules, and what I did was like, all right, so we're gonna have the, some of the same rules, okay. But we're gonna make it in a way where you guys are the hero. We're gonna change this world here, and they had to go to an area in the Underdark where there were dark elves, and they ran into dark elves that were just minding their own business, living their lives, and there were a sect of dark elves that were not as nice and doing the right things. And what they found out was these dark elves were being controlled by some entity from another realm that was trying to force them to do things for him because it wanted uh, bodies and it wanted mm-hmm. souls and stuff. And they went, found a way to free them and then f- get rid of this this creature. And so you kind of cherry pick what you want out of the story. And I didn't even really even go into all the details of what was going on there. Just dropped little hints mm-hmm. of things. Like, oh, man, there's chains. You see the people are locked up somewhere, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Any other questions before we... Oh, go ahead. Um, I go. I have one. Before we go, I will say that we are about to hit our eight o'clock mark. So if you are on your way out, we do have flyers for our Discord, for our Discord, yeah. and we also have flyers for the Cause Gala, which is an event that we have going on in September. Thank you. Founded by Anita here. It is a high-end Met Gala-esque event, cosplay, but you have to dress your very best. Mm -hmm. So I will put those there, and then you can go ahead, because I don't know if anyone's in the room. Is someone in the room after us? Just kidding. Ooh, they're closing the door. That means you've got the room. We're good. So, So, yeah. uh, Favorite homebrew stuff? Character moment. Yeah. Mechanic, character. Just give an example for everyone who... Okay. Yeah. 
So I come with a lot of homebrew stuff, um, from backgrounds to stories to monsters, lots of monsters, to items. Uh, my favorite monster is the Golden King Mimic. <laughs> I haven't got to rip you guys. <laughs> but Golden King Mimic, I was just a crazy idea. I was like, all right, so you've played like Dragon Quest or other creature games, and you have your generic monster there that people run into in the beginning of the game, and then you have some souped up version of that generic monster. So I was like, all right. Mimic is a custom is a regular monster in every game. People are used to mimics. I'm gonna turn this on its head and give it all the random shit. So I just took a whole bunch of rare items and just you know consumable items and threw them in there, and it will just I roll on a on a die and it'll just use some really powerful rare item that just burts out some random damage and then just break it. <laughs> so it was basically they had a time trial to see what they could get out of this thing mm -hmm. before it broke all the random items of using up. It's funny. I had, uh, it was during the election, um, and my friends were a little tired from the things that were happening in the world. So during one of our campaign sessions, I had them walk into a tavern, and all of the Democratic candidates were in there, and I created different characters for them to be an assistant NPC. And they chose to go with uh, Bernie Sanders, <laughs> um, who was a fire uh, wizard that particularly loved, you know, fire. Um, and he had this mechanic that I built that whenever he took damage, he would say, not me, us, and the damage would be equally dispersed <laughs> through the entire party. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the Joe Biden character thought he could turn into a werewolf, but he really didn't, and he just thought he was, so he was running on all fours thinking he was a werewolf and, like, <laughs> sniffing people. So, you know, it, it added a little bit of, you know, fun yeah. and a little bit of lightheartedness. Um, mm -hmm. And we really incorporated them into the game, and, like, they came together to help them fight this servant of a lich queen, and, you mm -hmm. know, Bernie really came through for them, and, mm -hmm. you know, but it... It was exciting for the players, but also like it gave me an opportunity to be like, how would I do the mechanics of uh, Buttigieg? And I was like, oh, he could just be a bard, but isn't really good at it at all. Mm -hmm. And like all of his songs are just very boring, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just stuff like that you can just kind of throw in and be like, how can I play with this? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I love this story because it's so brutal. Um, so this is not so much in game, but you know how when you play games, you, you can talk with the fellow players in your game. And um, there was a particular time that a fellow player was like, hey, I'm definitely going to find your character in the story. And I was like, please don't find my character in the story because my character will kill your character. And they did not believe me. So they found me, <laughs> my character within the story. We proceeded to have a battle. I proceeded to win. And then I ate their character sheet. Like I actually ate their character <laughs> sheet. That's how you die, folks. That, that's Brutal. how real it was. I literally ate it. And the character then, no longer exists. The character no longer exists and they had to start over again. Um, but that was probably one of my favorite moments. And then also recently at J1, it wasn't so much homebrew, oh. but <laughs> my character um, was no, a Valkyrie. Was, that was full homebrew. That was, that was, that okay, was full homebrew. Full okay. homebrew. Um, it was a Valkyrie and I don't remember the name of the individual like that literally opened like a portal below us and dropped our whole party in it and I was like <laughs> I will get the last laugh and I like arrow bolted the enemy as we were falling yep, down backwards. into the hole and then I actually hit them and I was like justice and that character wasn't supposed to take any damage whatsoever when I introduced yeah. them they were supposed to help them they were the warden of the forest and you just shot them. I just shot them I didn't and ask I any questions like, I was like, you, new, Let's go. weird, shoot. It's okay, we're fine. We're fine. Fine. It's fine. They were fine. It's fine. They were fine. They she were like got fine. back up. We were like, not fine. I hate it when that happens. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, favorite homebrew moments? There are a lot. Um, mainly because I get to Ikea. play with all of my friends, and they're so creative. Do the like, Ikea one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this, this is fair, because... When Bendy and I met through Matt's, uh, one of Matt's one shots, yeah. and we were talking afterwards, and say, oh, you make maps. I'm like, yeah. She's like, have you ever made an Avernus map? I went, no, but I could. And a couple months later, I was like, hey, Bendy, I'm running some folks through, I'm running some folks, uh, do you want to hop in for a session? And she's like, yeah, sure, sure. And 
Did I tell them they were going to Avernus? No. <laughs> Did I tell them anything else about it other than, hey, it's going to be with folks that you know? No. <laughs> so as soon as they got back, as soon as they, they, they joined in, they started running it, it's like, hey, great, everyone's together. Cool, I need you to go find this person. The doors open, go through, and as soon as they step through, boom, they're in Avernus. For any of you wondering what Avernus is, that is the first layer of hell. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's real bad. It's real, real bad. It's hell chickens. Real, real bad. And they taste terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not my fault. You just suck at cooking them. I didn't. I should have pressed a digitated the adobo. I understand now. Yeah. Yet again, these are real things that happened. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So the first place I had them go look for things, because... The first layer of hell, Vernus, is very, very big, and the best way to get around is in a Mad Max style Infernal War Machine. Mm-hmm. So um, I forgot the I forgot what I did. Uh, I, I forgot the actually I do have it because that's on it's my like phone. Infernal that's how Knights. Is this buying devil car in a salesman. Yeah, I, they they walked to into a junkyard, <laughs> which was essentially like, hey, this is a big old junkyard. Maybe you can find something there. Maybe you can talk to someone, and maybe you can get a war machine out of it. And they went through the whole thing. They, that one tried to pose as one of the queens of hell, but was about th- three or four feet too short. Um, so it didn't quite fly as best we thought it was. At least I tried. You did. It was great. I appreciate you. Um, the joke was not appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, not, but I loved it. The guy who was trying to sell him did not <laughs> like that. Um, almost kicked him out, but they were able to make out with it. And when they were looking back at the sign, uh, I, I'm whole. I have it here, and I want to like tell you what it said, because I honestly was like, oh, this is just gonna be a goofy thing to write, and they'll never figure it out. Uh, yeah, I think it was like Infernal Knights equipment and something like uh, and accessories. Yeah, it, it was something mm-hmm. silly. It was a hell IKEA. And it took forever yes. for us to realize that we were just in an IKEA in mm. hell because they had to put a bunch of stuff together. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, put, we put the car together ourselves. And they were like, "Oh, nice. do we have the key?" And they gave him a little Allen wrench. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was lovely. And it wasn't until as they were driving away, and they were like, "Wait, what was the name of that place?" And I told them, they're like. Did we just go to an Ikea? <laughs> yes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you did. Have fun. In hell. <laughs> no, that, I, yet again, for me, some of the best parts is just making the worlds that my friends get to play in. Yet again, I make maps for fun because it's great. And the fun stuff you get to do with this, because another, you know, other than trying to cook an infernal chicken in a blood river, <laughs> um, they, we were having, of course, if you have Mad Max machines, you gotta have a fight on the Mad Max machines, right? Of course we do. So as we were doing that, um, they defeated the first car, and I, you know, I said, oh yeah, you do your spell, and it goes off, and it kills the guy, and we go on, and one of our players stopped me and said, um, I have a question, did the car explode? And this was one of the first times, because I've like, been doing this for a while, I went, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Of course the car explodes. <laughs> so I just want every car they took out, I had to dramatically describe as how the car explodes because it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's that- off and flip and turn and just- <laughs> Also, did you have a question? I know you had your hand raised. Uh, I was just gonna ask what uh, you guys want to do with Obsidian Cruise, like how you want to grab what- Whose critical role? <laughs> We're going to be the next kind of goal role. Yeah, one of, one of our main goals is that we want to, one, foster a community, give people the opportunities to get to those spaces. If you want to be the Matt, next Matt Mercer, like we want to help you get there. Um, or not next, but at least be up there on that caliber. But um, another thing is we want to start making a YouTube series, having guests. You know, anyone can be a guest if you have mm-hmm. something you're interested in. If it's like you're into like Afro Samurai, we'll make an entire we'll make campaign. We'll a one shot, yeah. We'll, I've already been wanting to do that. <laughs> Um, I want to make a one shot that is, well, a campaign that is Call of Cthulhu, but it's HBCU students lost on spring break. Um, mm-hmm. So that's coming. Um, so things like that. Like we, and also we want to get in, I really want to go in, 
I want Obsidian Brews to go in a direction where we take therapy and mental health and Very things like that and to utilize tabletop to help, especially with young black communities. Um, so we're really just trying to make moves with it. So if you see in the future we got a Kickstarter out or if we're doing panels or events, just share. Yeah, you know, for events, we help us out. <laughs> we're going to be guests at Dragon Con, so yes. if you're going to Dragon Con, we will, we be, will be doing a shot, uh, one shot there. Um, where else are we going to be? Gonna be doing what? We're going to go a couple of places this year, but Dragon Con, yeah, for absolute sure. Um, Gen Con, we should be going back to. We just yeah. did our first panel at Gen Con last year. We're going to be going back. Um, possibly Awesome Con. I don't know. Possibly that'd be uh, nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, yeah. And if you know any like cons that you think would like benefit from this type of panel, you know, always message us on Obsidian Brews or whatnot. And we're Obsidian Brews on like every yes. platform. Um, and be like, hey, you ever tried, you know, this con? They really need a blank track or they really yes. need, you know, whatever. And we're open to do like the BIPOC mix mixers as well to yeah. create a tabletop space and run it for folks. You mm -hmm. know, we have games, you know, we can bring your own games, things like that, run one shots. We can, you know, have a collective of folks that are DMing at different tables. Like we have the capacity to do those things mm -hmm. and we want to. So we are very much over time. Yeah. I saw a staff <laughs> member in the back. Yeah. Where can we find you? Oh, hello. Just you. Oh. Just me. Hi, you can find me at Bendy Dinosaurs on Twitter and Bendy Mitchell on Instagram. Uh, Trinkle Ashes on absolutely everything. Resmonk Walker and Samurai Walker X, respectively on that. <laughs> I am Mad Dr. Rob on the Everywheres. Wow. If you would like to see just my maps, uh, you can head over to Instagram at MDR underscore Map Emporium. Thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm.